Neighborhood is well known as developers come when it comes to SCGs. They have steadily cemented themselves as the modern masters of the genre, besting even the mighty treasure in recent years in many, many circles. But most Western gamers looking from the outside in don't realize that Cave has had an interesting impact on their home market with its region-free shmups. And while it isn't their first region-free title, Mushihime Sama Futari version 1.5, also known on iOS as Bug Princess 2, is perhaps one of Cave's best-known region-free Xbox 360 imports. Mushihime Samba Futari was released to arcades in 2006 as version 1.0, with a limited, fixed, and enhanced version 1.01 board released for the 2006 Cave Festival. Version 1.5 later replaced version 1.0 as the standard game. A super-limited black label board, with a production number of about 150, was produced in 2007, and finally, version 1.5 made it to the Xbox 360 with a number of enhancements, and black label, as well as version 1.01 made available as DLC. That said, Mushihime Sama Futari has a surprising wealth of pretty sweet features, so let's take a closer look. Mushihime Sama Futari has two characters to choose from compared to the first game where players could only control the beetle riding Reiko. Palm, the Dragon Rider, has a different fire pattern and more centralized bomb attack. There are also three difficulties to choose from to start, Original, Maniac, and Ultra, which, unsurprisingly, mounts considerably in difficulty as you go up. In Ultra mode specifically, fire is relentlessly fast and complex, and is even prefaced with a warning screen that tells you you'll pretty much die instantly. Gameplay-wise, Mushihime Sama Futari adheres to a typical set of cave-style rules that we have seen time and time again in other reviews such as Akai Katana and Dodanpachi. The basic movement is a standard 8-directional system and fairly speedy, yet precise enough to navigate swarms of bullets all day long. Movement speed is, as always, dependent on what is being fired, but in this game players can opt for a bit of variety from the cave norm. After selecting your character, you must choose between normal and abnormal fire. With normal, the main rapid shot can continuously be fired without any kind of speed penalty. But there is also the beam type shot which, while more powerful, will cut your movement rate in half. Oftentimes, though, this reduced movement rate will help in more precisely avoiding the more dense bullet patterns you'll have to traverse. But with Abnormal selected, not only will your character's option pattern change, but the manner in which your ship moves will as well. In this case, Rapid will slow your shot down while the beam keeps you speedy. This makes a more powerful shot much riskier since collision with a dense wall of fire is much more likely with a quicker movement rate, obviously. As always, your fire can be upgraded with specific pickups. In addition, you have access to a bomber attack here as well, which is handy for wiping out all enemy bullets, but they will only affect a limited area of the screen for enemy kills. This makes for a more tactical approach to bombing, and sort of rewards players from resisting panic bomb. You can have a bomb stock of up to six at a time. Some modes like Novice or Arrange also have auto-bomb functions, which will hurl out a bomb to clear the bullets if you slip up, which is nice, well depending who you ask. Speaking of these other modes, Novice Mode presents a Mushihime-sama Futari game that is scaled back nicely for beginners to get a feel for, and much more importantly enjoy, the game at a much more casual pace. Perfect for newcomers, it's a great place to start if you want to get into this super hardcore subgenre. Then there is a Range Mode, which has players controlling both Reiko and Palm at the same time. By pressing the X button, you can switch between the two. Both Reiko and Palm have a shield that can be used to either slow bullets down in a specific radius while firing the main rapid shot, or reflect them when the beam shot is engaged. These shields can be recharged quickly if red and green or gem pickups are collected, indicated by a counter over the bomb stock. When both Reiko and Palm's counters reach 9999 each, they will enter fever mode, which changes the small gems that the reflected shots create into large gems instead, for a huger bonus. This counter is reduced as the shield is used to reflect bullets and counts down to zero in fever mode. Being a one-player mode, there is obviously a giant emphasis on score, which we'll get into in a second, but beyond this, a range is probably the easiest 1cc of all time. Finally, there's the Black Label mode, which is a DLC pack that will cost you a rather pricey 1200 Microsoft points, or about 15 bucks. Black Label arranges the game in such a way that it feels quite different than version 1.5. Enemies drop more gems, fire is a bit more intense, especially on higher difficulty, and there are a lot more bullet-clearing enemies that help wipe the screen once they are defeated. Jury's out on whether this is actually the hardest or easiest mode, but the be-all end-all fact remains, God Mode, the source of those infamous hardest boss ever videos you might have seen, is found here in Black Label, and man, does it ever get intense. 
In all of these modes, as you do better and collect more of the amber gems that fall from enemies to boost your score, an active rank will build or fall depending on your performance. As rank increases, bullets will greatly increase in speed, making things considerably more challenging as you progress. All of this boils down to one single truth. There's a mode here for everyone, and plenty of room for any player at all to be able to 1cc the game and improve their skill, thanks to the great control and difficulty curve. Not an easy thing to accomplish, but accomplished it is. There are some really subtle things to take into consideration when playing for a score in Mushihime Sama Futari, and it may not seem especially evident at first. When you defeat your opposition, you'll receive a number of gems relative to where they are destroyed. If you're using the laser attack, they continue to fall, where a rapid shot vacuums them up on approach. These pickups will start two counters on the top left-hand corner of the screen, an overall multiplier and a stage multiplier which resets each stage and is displayed below the overall counter. This counter builds towards a stage end bonus, but if you look closely, it will change between green and blue every 500 gems. This is a visual cue that tells you when to use either rapid fire green or lasers blue to get more gems than you would otherwise. There are also gems with colored auras. Green gems are worth more while blue colored ones will drop your count. In ultra mode, the counter switches every 2000 gems in version 1.5. This counter will gradually fall when fighting bosses, but if you can time the required fire with the boss's phase destruct, a huge gem bonus can usually be obtained. If you die or use a bomb though, a large amount of these gems will be subtracted from the total. Gems collected previous to death won't be counted at stage end, and of course, bombing will not result in drop gems. And of course, at stage end, you'll get a boost out of your collected gems, remaining bomb stock, and a no-miss bonus if you can make it through without dying. Within version 1.5, Maniac Mode switches things up with increased enemy fire and a direct multiplier that grows with yellow gems and applies to bullet wipes while using lasers. There's also a chain meter that allows for higher multiplier to be sustained between score bursts. When rapid shots are used, normal yellow gems are obtained, while lasers often result in blue gems which knock down the multiplier, but still add directly to the score. The Black Label Mode increases the color count to 3000 original and embraces 1.5 Maniac Mode scoring across Black Label Maniac and God difficulties, albeit with a max multiplier of 30,000 rather than 9,999. With so many more gems and bullet clearing enemies, your score is sure to mount to ridiculous levels, especially in God Mode. In Arrange Mode, it's a bit different. While there isn't a color element to getting more gems, you do get gems for every hit against an enemy, be it from rapid shots or lasers. The same multiplier benefits and penalties for different aura colors applies here too. The lasers will supply a steady stream of blue glowing gems that can get the overall counter all the way into the tens of thousands, but decreases the multiplier count significantly. Yellow gems are the focus here, and are also counted towards the shield counter at the bottom of the screen for both Palm and Reiko. The best way to score here is if you can slow down and corral a bunch of bullets around you while the rapid shot is engaged, and then reflecting them when you have a whole bunch just crawling along. If done correctly, a huge swath of yellow gems can be obtained, which can easily get both Reiko and Palm up to 9,999 in their shield gauge, while the stage multiplier can be easily maxed out at 99,999. Every single mode of play in this game has a score tag option as well, allowing players to see how they rank in the worldwide arena. For those with mastery or even a good understanding of the scoring, Mushihime Sama Futari delivers an awesome competitive edge. Mushihime Seba Futari is kind of interesting when it comes to its presentation. On the one hand, everything is graphically beautiful with well-produced, very well-animated pre-rendered sprites, typical of most of Cave's games. The backgrounds have all sorts of detail to them, fallen ground enemies leave smoldering craters behind, and especially in the high-definition 360 modes, everything is so well-rendered and smooth, it's kind of amazing. But on the other, with so many bullets whizzing around from both you and your opposition, it's hard to see any of it. Especially in the case of Reiko in Arrange Mode, when Kaniro is fully powered up, your fire is so dense you can't see 90% of the stage's backgrounds. Despite this, it's not too difficult to see your small hitbox. Enemies are never lost to your bullets, and there's no confusion between your bullets or your enemies. 
And in case you're wondering, yes, the slowdown is intentional. After all, in a game like this, slowdown isn't a penalty, it's earned. Beyond the high quality of the in-game elements, the overall art direction is extremely good as well, which enhances an already great visual package with awesome hand-drawn art and tasteful title and ranking screens. And of course, all of the low-def arcade original versions are here too, complete with the ability to turn the screen Tate style in all modes. The sound is pretty amazing here too. There are a number of vastly different sound effects used for enemy destruction, with all kinds of different explosions, shrieks, and groans, depending on what you're annihilating. Reiko and Palm are also voiced well and never come off as irritating. One thing that doesn't mess around is the OST, penned by Manabu Namiki and Kimihiro Abe. The BGM here perfectly captures Muchihime Sama Futari's tone with a great many standout pieces, all of which are suitably upbeat. When it all comes straight down to it, Mushihime Sama Futari not only offers super solid gameplay and deeply addictive scoring, but also a plethora of modes and difficulties that accommodate a very wide range of playstyles and skill levels, which is a very rare thing indeed. So how does it stack up? Let's take a look. Mushihime Sama Futari has some seriously tight control. When you can consistently get through a crack two pixels wide, you know the control is as good as it gets. Mushihime Sama's control is about as smooth as it comes, even for novices. Ranging from super easy to so hard, you have to be a god. Futari's challenge is undeniable, yet manageable, no matter your skill level. Mushihime Sama is my first 1cc, but also goes from friendly to vicious at the drop of a hat. While the core game is five stages long, multiple game types and versions keep things very fresh all the way through. While this game might not be especially long, its length plays to its replayability, given its many, many different modes. These 2D visuals are extremely well produced, and the art direction overall is pretty amazing. Mushihime Futari even looks good in its low-def arcade perfect mode as well. The OST here is absolutely fantastic. With a good pair of headphones, you can really get absorbed by its greatness. The sound effects work really well here too, with satisfying explosions, splats, and more. The score hooks here are unbelievable, no matter what the version you're playing. It's a cave game with a lot of samey elements, but presented with all kinds of subtle differences that make it unique. Novice Mode makes this a super approachable game for even the most green gamers to dive in and wreak some havoc, and giving them room to grow accordingly. There seems to be a pretty good reason why Mushihime Sama Futari has garnered as great a reputation as it has. Masterful mechanics, addictive scoring, and a great presentation all comes together in a region free import that everyone should be playing. Mushihime Sama Futari version 1.5 gets a 4.5 out of 5. Normally, new imports and even used ones for the Xbox 360 can get very expensive, but Mushihime Sama Futari version 1.5 has actually sold so well, likely due to its international exposure and region free nature, that it has achieved platinum hit status and can be had brand new for about 40 bucks, though original prints can often go for more at auction. Any way you look at it, this is one region free import that you should be getting if you have an Xbox 360, no questions asked. 